Hey guys, welcome to The Art of Comics. I am ex super excited. I just got this in the mail from our friends at Amazon. The D&D Essential Kit. Now, hold up, wait up before you hit unsubscribe. Let me explain this to you. This is The Art of Comics. This is about the comic book industry, making comics, graphic novels, sequential art, things like that. Every now and then, I go off and talk a little bit about a tangential kind of topic. I talk about movies, things like that. Well, today I'm gonna just dip into role playing. Don't worry, this is not gonna turn into the role playing game channel, but by golly, I've dedicated, I've got a shelf full of role playing game books. I've dedicated my life since I was like eight in D&D &D and Star Frontiers and Marvel and DC superheroes and all these different role playing games. I've played a lot. Um, and so this is on Amazon for seven dollars seven bucks for the basic set basically It's called D&D essentials, and I want to talk to you guys about it really quick. Let's open it up I just got this literally just a few minutes ago. Okay, so I have my little uh, partner here today <laughs> um, So a little history about D&D essentials and or my experience with it. So this is basically the fifth edition this is like the basic set. This is the bare bones, stripped down. This is what you need to play. It says two to six players, right? So a DM and one to five players. Um, and I played the original AD and D. I played Dungeons and Dragons. I've actually played Chainmail, which is even before that. My game has always been Second Edition. That's the one that came in the late '80s, uh, early '90s. So second edition is what we played. I do know third, played a lot of 3.5, which was like Pathfinder, kind of used that system, and then fifth. So this is fifth, I didn't play much of fourth. Um, so now I think they call it D&D Beyond is like, the, so you get this for seven bucks, dude, on Amazon. I don't make money from that, by the way. Um, I should. <laughs> and, um, if you really love it, then you can get the, the, the hardcover books and get all the books and then kind of like build it out. But honestly, after looking at this for just five minutes just now, this is enough to like have you and your games play. This is good for kids. This is good for the dads and the kids or just a bunch of dads or adults or whatever, you know, you and your girlfriend. You can roll out with this. So not a problem. Will you get down? You're not playing D&D. &D. You're too little. Okay. So why don't we just like open this up, okay? I just got this, let's open it up, check it all out, and uh, see what we think, okay? Here we go, and you, you go somewhere else. Let's do this, let's flip it around, okay? Okay, so, you know, let me break this down. This is the art of comics, but this is also about storytelling, you know, and where do stories come from, and what stories are important to us. And when I think about myself, there, there, are, there are three things I'm like passionate about that like gets my juices flowing, okay? Comics, clearly. Games, role-playing games, you know, probably more than anything, but like even board games, things like that, and film. Uh, so when I think of myself as a little kid and my mom got me the red box, which is the basic D&D &D set back in like, 85, 86, uh, and gave it to me thinking that it's like a board game almost or something that we could play because she loved The Hobbit and Tolkien and stuff like that. That opened up this world of storytelling, cooperative, you know, storytelling that uh, just, you know, fueled my fire, right? So it's like with the comics and the role-playing games, you're able to go into this new world, have this kind of place where you could uh, escape from the, the pains of reality, the struggles, all that kind of stuff, and, and live, out, live out another world, an you know, idealized version perhaps of yourself. So I've been playing, you know, role-playing games since I was a kid, D&D specifically, because that was the one I played. So uh, literally, I found that this they they were selling the set that's 25 bucks for seven dollars I'm like let's get this I got a seven-year-old kid he's a little too young for it perhaps but 
I just want to get it to read it, to look at the art, and to kind of like reminisce, and maybe I'll play it again. Because I have played even recently, uh, not too long ago. So, um, so I'll play a game of D&D. &D. Now with COVID and everything, it's kind of difficult, so you have to do it on Zoom, which I hate, but you know, there's that thing. So, uh, and I am partial to the older systems because I'm an older guy. So, you know, I'm really familiar with the first edition, second edition, things like that. I'm not so familiar with the fourth and now the new fifth edition. But at seven bucks, I can learn, right? And I play so many different types of role-playing games. Like, like there's a role-playing game they use a Jenga set as your as your as your like randomness as your skill checks is a Jenga set. I mean, there's just some brilliant, brilliant ideas on how to tell a story together cooperatively and how to use role-playing games. Uh, so really cool stuff is going on out there right now in, in gaming world. So I got it, I thought, you know, let's show this with the channel. Maybe there's some comic geeks like me who like role playing games. And for the rest of you, hey, I get it. It's not your bag. You know, don't watch this video, watch something else. Uh, it's all good, no big deal. Okay, everybody, here we go. This is the box. Like I said, I just got this, like, I was excited. I thought, maybe I should do a review of this. Like, I don't know. Some of these guys aren't into role playing, they're here about comics. But you know what? There is an overlap. Uh, people who play D&D read comics and vice versa. Not all of them, but some do. So, again, I think this retails for, I want to say it retails for 20. How much is this? Uh, it retails for 25 bucks. 25 bucks, and this is what you get for $7 right now, okay? Uh, first off, you get some dice, which, these are nice little dice. Uh, they're not the crayon type that I used to have back in the yeah. 80s. So these are nice little dice, you like the dice? Pretty good, my daughter's here with me still. Yeah, you like them? Okay, so you get some dice, you get one of everything, and you get two uh, tens, which is kind of nice, okay? So you get some dice, actually you get three sixes, four sixes, okay, this is a nice, nice little dice set. So there you go, that right there, it's like seven bucks right there, boom, okay? Um, you get the, So you get an adventure book. This is the, the Dungeon Master book, basically. It's got a bunch of modules, so it's already ready to go. Looks like there's some modules. You've got like your monster stats here. So that's pretty cool. And I like the art. I do like some of the newer art. Um, there's a great book. Can I show it to you real quick? Uh, where is it? This book right here. This book is really great. Um, if you guys want, comment if you want me to do a, a video of this. This is called The Art and Arcana Visual History. And this is a massive book about the art of Dungeons and Dragons. From the very beginning, to nowadays and so this is a really great art book and uh, I was I got this last Christmas super stoked about it so um, I like the newer art it you know of course it's all digital but it's got that kind of cool painted look some of the stuff is really nice so big fan of, of that uh, so yeah and it's got all the adventures so this is ready to go again if you're a player you don't want to look too much into that okay you have the essential book you want to look at that? You can. Okay, you have the essential book, which is the rules. This is basically what you're going to do to like have the rules. And let's just take a look at this for a second on what this what this comes in. So, uh, actually no, before we do that, let's look at everything else. Um, this is like, I don't know what this is. It's a little box. I don't know what this is. So I haven't figured out what this is yet. Uh, again, I just bought this. Um, Initiative cards, okay, maybe instead of rolling for initiative, you do the shuffle, that's fine. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Again, I haven't played fifth edition much, so I need to kind of like go through what this is about. You get, um, don't worry about that right now. You get the, what are these? Uh, combat cards, different like conditional things, prone, poison, unconscious. Some rules, some little like combat cards. That's kind of cool. So we get these guys, charm, blind, frightened. Okay, kind of neat. Uh, what are these? You get some. Let's look at this. These are like a. Um, they look like little NPCs, perhaps. I'm assuming they're NPCs, or maybe they're characters you can just like kind of grab onto. 
pre-generated. There's no stats to them though, so I think there might just be a little like, uh, oh, sidekicks. Okay, I don't know what that is um, in as far as game terms, because we didn't have that in the editions I played. Magic item, so that's kind of cool, little cards. I like that, you know, back in the day you have big manuals, right? Like you had the Unearthed Arcana and you have the Dungeon Master's Guide that have like pages and pages of magic items. So it's kind of nice to have cards. It maybe simplifies things a bit or makes it a little easier. Uh, again, this is bare bones stripped down. I think it's perfect this way though. Do we really need 50 pages of magic items? Not really. Is it cool? Yeah. But could you play like tons of games without it? Sure, because you're never gonna use half those. So this is like, what is this, nine times, you know, eight? So you're, you got plenty of variety to play a bunch of games, right? Uh, what is this? This is a cool Dungeon Masters screen. Okay, this is a little like wussy in that it's really, it's really kind of short, but uh, it looks like it probably has all the things a Dungeon Master would need. My daughter's rolling dice. Go pick that up, kid. And the art is pretty neat. Let's look at the art. Because that's like half of the fun of Dungeons and Dragons is checking out the illustrations and letting that kind of help take you away. I do like I do like the uh, the illustration. This is pretty fun. So that's good. Again, digital painter -y stuff. I dig it. And what else we got here? Let's see. Uh, we got some character sheets, looks like. Oh yeah, these are and these are nice. These are guys you want to like print out, make copies on your computer printer, and uh, scanner and do. So that's cool. And then we got a little like ad. Got to have an ad. Oh, and you get a ten percent off of the digital version of some stuff. So that's cool. And oh, and we got a big map of. I think this is Forgotten Realms, right? This is it Forgotten Realms? Yeah, so this is Forgotten Realms. This is Sword Coast, uh, which I know I played this tons. I played Neverwinter Nights and, uh, you know, Baldur's Gate, all that stuff. So I know the Sword Coast, or, and I know Forgotten Realms a lot. I don't think they even call it Forgotten Realms anymore. I think they just call it D&D. It used to be Forgotten Realms because there was another system called Greyhawk, World of Greyhawk, which is before that even. Uh, so, and then we got a little, like, city here. So we got a cute little map. Uh, let's look at the rule book, guys. Because that's what it's all about. Checking out the rules. Because I'm curious, like, what have they changed in this 5th edition version? And what's going on with it? So, let's take a gander at this. Um, I'll say... Okay, a little intro here. It, again, produced really well. I mean, all the magazines are like this now. Uh, all, all the books are just like, if you were to look at this and then you even compare with the second edition put out in the, you know, in the 90s, it is like above and beyond production wise. Just the ability to like the color, you know, the paper quality, everything here is just better. Um, so they're adding proficiencies, it looks like. We've got the same stats, which is good, because if they were to change those, I would have problems. So strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, in the same order, so that's good. I like that. That's a modifier, basic modifiers, which is nice because before it was like, each of these abilities had their own type of modifier, so it's nice that they're all kind of basic. Um, so after that, let's look at, okay, we have our alignment still, that's good. We've got to have the alignments. Now, so this is new, this here, this uh, personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. And this is really coming from some of the more modern systems like Dungeon World and um, things like that. Where's my Dungeon World book? Is it right here? This is a great book. If you haven't played this, this is a great system. And it looks like d and taking some of these ideas of Dungeon World in here, which I'm totally fine with. I'm totally fine with making it better. And if that means using some other systems like uh, concepts, that's good. So bonds, I really like bonds. Flaws and ideals, that's good. Just another way to kind of create the role-playing moments 
as a DM, you need those for your characters to really kind of cement your storylines. So that's good. Um, what is our races? So they've got human, dwarf, two types of dwarfs, hill and mountain, two types of elves, high and wood, and a halfling. Uh, no gnome, no half orc, none of the tiefling and all that weird crap. So I like that. I don't want crocodile men and all that. So they simplified that. Kind of strange they put two types of dwarves and two types of elves, but whatever. That's fine. Because um, the hill dwarf and the mountain dwarf, really? Are they that different? I don't know. The wolf, the elves, I get that, but not the dwarves. Um, let's see here. Pretty simple. So yeah, they got the different special abilities they each have. And the classes. Let's look at classes, because that's, that's important. We got the bard. Bard is like so popular nowadays, I feel like. Back in the day, man, no one played bard but me. Uh, we've got cleric. So we got our cleric, we've got our, some spells with a cleric, that makes sense, different domains, uh, like divinity domains, fighter, okay, got the classic fighter, now do they have barbarians and paladins, I don't think so, I'm not seeing barbarians or paladins, none of those type guys, oh, we do have this, Elrich Knight. Uh, what is this? A magic? Oh, okay, so this is kind of like a war mage or something. Elrich Knight? I'm not sure about what that's about. Oh, 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 archetypes. Okay, so these are like subsets of fighters. We've got champion, Eldritch Knight. That's it? Oh, champion and Eldritch Knight. Okay. Interesting. Rogue. Gotta have a rogue. Or the thief back in the day. And what are the rogue archetypes you've got arcane trickster and a thief kind of classic so the wizard here has um a couple of different uh things as well nice little spell list simple again we're going back to basics you don't really need 500 spells i mean you do once you've been playing for 20 years but to just have a nice quick little game every Thursday for a couple months, whatever, this is totally sufficient. Um, they do have some different schools, like School of Evocation, School of Transmutation, um, and then the, again, they got these backgrounds, which are um, these like subclasses of mage, looks like acolyte, criminal, entertainer, so there's a couple things, which just gives it a little bit more meat on it, sage. Soldier, that's kind of interesting. Um, playing the game again, I really like the art. I mean, for dude, for seven, for seven bucks, this really is a great value. I mean, this would be worth it for twenty five, but seven bucks. I mean, it's like what two comics? Great deal. Um, ability checks. So this is nice. It's making everything simplified with ability checks. You roll your d twenty. You need a five. You need a ten. Again, this time, this kind of stuff is very reminiscent of some of these kind of newer systems that streamline the rules because it's all about storytelling. It's all about telling the story and making it this cooperative thing and not being bogged down by rules. You know, this isn't GURPS. This isn't some of those systems that are just like super rules heavy, okay? It's not needed. Uh, some checks, showing you how to do checks, social interaction. This is really cool. This looks like, and what? how many pages is this thing? It's only, it's 63 pages, but, but this looks like this has all you need. If you want to get more, of course you get the other manuals and stuff, but for now, I think that's what, this is good enough. Armor, weapons, you know, that's always nice to have a good amount of weapons. You got your swords. Um, yeah, man, I think this is like, this is a great, and then some, oh, we got some magic magic items and such. Spells, gotta have spells. Critical, yeah, I'm a big fan. This is like a great value. Uh, I'm really excited to kind of actually, I might actually play this. So this is kind of a cool, this is a quick little video of the whole set. Uh, again, we're not gonna go down this rabbit hole and do D&D &D games or nothing like that, but I just wanted, I got this, I was really excited about it. I wanna share it with you guys and thought, ah, this would be a fun little extra video. So there'll be more videos coming out this week. I think Thursday, Saturday, 
we'll be talking more about, uh, I think, Camelot 3000, stuff like that. But for now, thank you very much for this little extra video. Have a great day. Take care, guys.